off for tiny house today I'm working on this is the PV array direct current isolation switch so it's a giant switch right it's just an on off switch so um, this is the inside of it and this was uh, recommended to me by Stu for my six panels in series that are not yet wired in but will be wired into the the positive end will be wired into this switch so I can shut things off and that will be feeding my uh, large battery bank setup once the batteries go on sale so inside we have quite quite a quite an array of stuff here but what you do is if you look here on the diagram hopefully that shows up I can't tell if the cameras in focus or not there it goes so basically from this diagram I believe uh, is it upside down no um, it says if I put the wire on number one and then the other wire on number two then we have a switch in between so that's it looks perfect so where I want to come in so the what the positive red wire coming in off the solar panels goes into number one here and then uh, I got to go down to number two down here and plug that in and that wire continues on into the MPPT charge controller and from the from there the MPPT charge controller converts it and drops it into the battery bank setup so this is a um, pretty hefty on off DC switch but I needed it because this will handle the um, up to a thousand volts uh, of direct current off the solar and uh, because I'm putting the panels in series it increases the voltage every time so 12 times 6 will give you that number I don't have a calculator I suck at math you guys can figure that out that's how many volts will be flowing through that wire and when it hits the MPPT charge controller which pretty much maxes it out it's basically that guy's limit over there so that's kind of spec perfectly by uh, high tech guy Stu, uh, for, for loyal friend of the channel and uh, behind the, the stuff I do, and uh, he's my uh, go-to guy for any electrical issues because uh, he knows his stuff and I don't. I'm just a DIYer here. But solar's pretty easy, guys. It's not too tricky, especially with the smaller stuff. Um, you know you can do it fairly easy with a just a basic little setup yourself and start there um, other than that uh, what I have to do is take my drill and punch out these uh, holes right here so I'm gonna go there and I'm gonna go here because the number one like I said is over here and the number two is over here and I believe because of the wiring diagram that I'm correct in that's the way the switch will work so that's the what what I'm gonna do so I'm gonna drill out this piece of plastic because it's not one that you can just break out with a screwdriver and uh, let's go ahead and start drilling make sure I'm on the right uh, section here and uh, this will be fun because the tables on a slant and I have to use two hands on the drill that goes <laughs> flying whoopsie <laughs> I didn't know that was not connected inside the box so hopefully I didn't damage that but let's keep going get this thing uh do a little deburring and then I'll have to vacuum up here all this plastic so that's one hole done um, it shouldn't, it's plastic on plastic, so it shouldn't eat into the wire whatsoever. 
And then this side is the other side I have to do. So we'll do him right now. And we'll sweep things up in a second. deburring get any uh, nasties out of there that could possibly hurt the wire so I'm gonna sweep this up I'll be back in a second alrighty guys so I got the holes drilled as you saw there and uh, this part did go flying um, I guess uh, if you can see inside of here it was just, there's little uh, ports that it just goes into. And then I guess you're supposed to put two screws in there to hold that. So I'll have to add those screws because I don't think they give them to you. Or actually, does that just pull out? Okay, so maybe it's just a press fit. But anyway, I was wondering how to access the terminals here. So that's bonus. Um, I can then open up with the Phillips blade screwdriver. Can you guys see? Yeah, that opened this portion up right here. And I need to also open up portion two. Flip that around. And I believe that's how the switch runs. One to two for wiring because I'm just running one wire um, this one is made for a whole variety of stuff, so there you go. So I'm just going to place that back in there, making sure number one is where it should be. I'm going to line up these holes. I'm not entirely sure where they are. Oh, there we go. So there's that. So as the wire will be fed in through here, I can connect it there easily to one, and then I can connect it easily here to two, coming out the bottom, the opposite side. And then here is the final giant switch that goes like so, and gets screwed down. And it says on here, if you read it, off, on. And then I guess it's one of those snap snap fittings or whatever. And then I believe that's it. That's all she wrote. It's just basically an on-off switch. So I, if I have to work on the solar system, guys, I can kill the power and not kill myself because that's a you know getting to that type of range on solar, you got to be careful because. Electri electricity can kill, especially on this end of it. So that's for the big setup. And uh, hopefully, if uh, everything goes well this summer, uh, work-wise, and when those batteries go on sale, I can uh, do some heavy videoing for you guys on the setup. Because I gotta still connect the wires in series on the roof, drill a hole inside uh, on the tiny house so I can feed all those wires through and I'm also that same hole I'm going to also run out other equipment TV antenna cable will go out that hole um, I will probably also run out the um, wireless uh, antenna and also the, uh, the wind turbine wires will come through there as well. So there you go. Um, I think that's going to work out great, guys. So stay tuned for that video. You'll see more of this when I get closer to that stage. And uh, hopefully you guys subscribe, like, share, and stick around for that. That's coming up this summer. So we'll see you, see you when you see you. There you go. Ha, ha, ha.